job. It's it's interesting, you know. I was finally doing the math the other day, and if my 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 simple math facts and stuff. At first, I was saying, "Oh, that's about five months away." Then I realized it was about four months away. And these guys will be back here. They, like you say, this wraps up spring, and they'll be back here in three months. You know, to kick off fall camp. So it's all not too far away, and it's a great day for a little football today. And it's a it's a loose scrimmage. Coach Mack will be returning for his 19th season as the leader of the University of New Hampshire football team. We'll uh, set it up. We've put 12 minutes on the clock. And uh, the uh, the offense will be led today by four different quarterbacks. The one that UNH fans are very familiar with is the junior from Nashua South, Trevor Knight. He's expected to get a significant portion of the reps this year, although it'll be the New Hampshire kid, Ivan Nina Magabu, who will have the Snap on the first possession of the game for Team White. Put the ball down at the 35-yard line, and let's play some football here today. Be a handoff. This is another New Hampshire product in Jerricks and Fedrick, who takes the handoff. Fedrick started his career at Maine and hoping to earn some playing time here in New Hampshire. And there are some reps uh, to pick up here. UNH has lost quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. Dalton Crossan, who's who had an outstanding career at UNH as a as a running back, a return guy, uh, has graduated. He's hoping to hear some good news today in the NFL draft. And uh, boy, he handled the ball a lot last year. And talking to the coaches, I think it was, they they put a number on the board. We have an interception here on the second play of the game. Is uh, senior captain DeAndre Drummond Myrie is going to pick off Ivan Nia Magabu. Magabu sprinting to his left, looking downfield and pass a little off the mark. And so it's the senior from Lawrence, Mass, who comes up with it. One of four captains named earlier this week here for Coach Sean McDonald. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, DeAndre was one of the of the four captains. He's the one who plays defense. Uh, and that was that was a play there. It went off the hands of a receiver, and he he was in the right place at the right time. And good start for the defense. Not so much for the offense. Trevor Knight will come out as the quarterback, and the running back here on this set will be 48, Donald Goodrich, senior from York, Maine. Maybe as much experience as any of the running backs. It's going to be an inside screen. We're going to see this play a lot, I think. Out of the slot, Malik Love had a terrific season a year ago, and he comes up with a reception, and that'll be a first down and pickup of 11 yards. And Knight and Love move the chains right away. That's going to be a favorite play. No question about that. Night again to throw. And there's another big target, Neil O'Connor, thrown out of bounds over there with the cornerback, Aiden Brown. Pickup of about six. Yeah, and there's what they're right in those first two plays with Trevor Knight, the, the two guys that saw an awful lot of time last year, Malik Love and Neil O'Connor, and led the team in receptions. Knight's pass to Love for 11, and then to O'Connor for three, makes the second down and seven. UNH spring football game. It's Love on the right side. Slicing through on the right side. It'll be taken down. Marino is there. So is uh, 26 Gino Miller. On the reception, Malik Love is his second catch. Yeah, Love, Love and, and O'Connor last year had 117 catches between them, and it couldn't have been much more even, or it couldn't have been any more even. Love had 59 of them, and Neil O'Connor had 58 of them. So they caught a lot of balls, those two. And they both can be very productive. Deep threats. Love will be in the slot here on the left side, and it'll be a run play. A little inside handoff, and this is a sophomore, Evan Gray, that I think uh, he'd be expected to be uh, one of the workhorses there out of the UNH backfield. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and he was expected to be to begin with, and, and we haven't touched on it yet, but uh, unfortunately, Trayvon Bryant, a returning senior, uh, another one of the, t the captains, uh, name the other day, hurt his knee, and it will likely miss the season next year. So Evan Gray will be called on. And perhaps. the pocket, pocket collapses. There's Balsamo will get credit for the sack. Go ahead on uh, on our running back, Bryant. Yeah, Bryant is out, probably out for the season. So there are a lot of those carries that we talked about with Dalton Crossan. There are 295 touches Dalton Crossan had last year, and there are, there are some touches to be had, and Evan Gray, you know, especially with Trayvon Bryant out, will be one of those guys who, who should see the ball a lot. So we've seen Jerickson Fedrick in the backfield and Evan Gray and Donald Goodrich. And then another uh, another player to watch will be 42, Deontay Chapman, right? Switched from defense 
Knight, this is an empty backfield, and it almost gets picked off trying to hit O'Connor in the slot. Michael Balsamo brings it up, and it brings up a great point here about the UNH Wildcat secondary, which is should be a really, really terrific unit with a lot of experience coming back. And very young, too. It's, it's really exciting to see what that group can do. So I call it third and 17. We're about uh, three minutes into the blue-white scrimmage. Here's Trevor Knight looking to throw out of the pocket, sprinting left, and he can move the chains with his feet. He'll be uh, stopped here a little bit short of the first down. And we've kind of watched the development of Trevor Knight, who I'm not going to I'm not going to criticize, but oftentimes early in his career, maybe forced out of the pocket a little bit, and he'd take off. Last year, I thought, was much improved in terms of holding his position, especially the second half of the year, holding that pocket. Let's see if the Cats can make a field goal here. It's a 32-yard try by Morgan Elman right through. So three points on the board. Yeah, you mentioned Trevor Knight really came on last year as the season progressed, too, in his, in his first year as a starter. I mean, he had, you know, he had a... a, a Fairly high number of interceptions in the first half of the year. The second half of the year, he really cut back on that. So he's shown a lot of progression, and obviously, you know, they're looking for more of that as this, this season continues. They're actually going to call that Team Cats. I guess with all of the offensive players wearing white and all of the defensive players wearing blue, you don't really have white and blue. We've So we're going to call it Wild and Cats. And so put three points on the board for Katz on a Morgan Elman 32-yard field goal. All right, Elman certainly you... a bright spot a year ago. Exactly. What is 7 for 10 in field goals last year? Um, and then, But there's competition at that position, too. Max Pednoff, the punter last year, has been kicking real well in the preseason. Will Pollard out of Kennett High School in New Hampshire gives it to Deontay Chapman. One-yard loss on the run, starting from the 35-yard line, be second down and 11 from the 34. Pollard, little underneath pass. That'll be 17. Michael Hirschman, a junior from Mansfield, Massachusetts. Hirschman, I don't believe has any uh, catches on the uh, for UNH at this point. He's got one now. Oh, they, they didn't give him that one, right? Incomplete intended for Hirschman, so it's third down and 11. Playing the first quarter. Coach Sean McDonald retains his entire staff from last year. Pollard, that'll be a completion to Aiden Brown, but short of the first down. A nice so catch in traffic there by Aiden Brown. Well, he'd be uh, listed as a cornerback on the roster, but maybe uh, working him into some reps on the receiver side. Yeah, sometimes you got to keep up with these roster changes, these number changes, and it's hard to, you know, can change by the on the fly pretty much, Bob. So Max Pettinoff, and he's the uh, veteran returning punter for the Wildcats, will drop back. Have to pick up some new return guys as well because both Casey DeAndre and Dalton Crossan have figured big in the return game. This one hits Team Blue. This time they send Pop Lacey back. The sophomore from Reading, Pennsylvania, who had a tremendous freshman year. Ian Prince Smith Jr., the true freshman who played out of the secondary, and Smith went on to be named the CAA Defensive Rookie of the Year. Well, and, and Lacey led the team in tackles. They both they both had tremendous years as, as true freshmen. It's funny, you listen to the coaches talk about them this this spring, and they talk about uh, clearly, you know, you could see it on the field. You know, they, uh, Prince Smith had five interceptions. Uh, Pop Lacey had 82 tackles. You could see their production. But the coaches talk about, you know, they made their fair mistakes, too. When, when things broke down, oftentimes it would be them. But they were playing as true freshmen, which is very unusual, and pl especially playing the number of repetitions they played. Team Cats leading three to nothing. Christian Lupoli will be the quarterbacks. We've seen all four quarterbacks on the first four series of the year. And we'll get a... Penalty flag here. 
Running back for this set, Evan Gray, 22. The starting setter is another one of the captains, Jake Kennedy out of Sauhegan High School, Amherst, New Hampshire. Yeah, Jake. Set. Go ahead. No, it's because Jake had some nice experience to that line, too. He, he has started some games in the past, but was not a starter last year. But the, the two tackles on either side, Will McEnany and Dane Heron, both were starters. All right, here's a pass loopily looking over the middle and trying to get it to Malik Love. And it is incomplete. So to make it second down and 10, Mike Murphy was just in to point out uh, Aiden Brown is a defensive player. Jason Hughes is the receiver, 21. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Okay. And you know what? I knew that from pregame warm-ups because Hughes was kicking, remember? And I said to you, I think he's wearing 21. I, and you said, well, he's a wide receiver too. And in fact, that uh, was the case. Again, we're going to learn the numbers as we go along. You can throw a penalty flag on me if you want. So here's a third down play. Lupoli's out of uh, the same high school that gave us one of the most productive UNH quarterbacks here of recent time, Sean Goldrich. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. No flags on you, Bob. This is a loose, a loose game. Lupoli to throw. Here comes the pressure backside. He's going long. They've got O'Connor downfield, and didn't that look good? To Team Wild's 38-yard line on a long hookup from Lupoli to O'Connor. Uh, nice ball, nice catch on the other end by Neil O'Connor. Like we said, he's one of the one of the re backs returning, who one of the receivers returning, who had a great season last year. He'll be a junior in the fall from Lemonster, Massachusetts. Here's Gray trying to get outside, and let's see who was over there. First, looked like uh, 34, Nelson Thomas. He's a redshirt freshman from Edison, New Jersey. Short second down, run play, Goodrich. Push near the first down marker. I saw Donald uh, talk about our Thursday night throwdown opening game against Maine, and he's from Maine, and it's a it'll be a fun way to start the season. Yeah, he was he was all excited talking about that, and um, he lives in York. He actually played in at Chevers High School outside of Portland or in Portland. Uh, played his high school ball there, so he said, to, "Yeah, any Maine game, he gets a little more amped up for." Lupili Love was on his uh, back when he makes the catch a little bit short of the first down. 16 of the previous 18 years that Coach Mack has been the head coach here, UNH has finished the season playing for the Bryce Cowell Musket against the University of Maine. But a little bit of a change up this year. The first time it's since the 80s that UNH has actually hosted an opening day game against Maine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be pretty exciting. I mean, to... You know, there are so many things that are exciting about it. It'll be the opening game, an opening CAA game. That's pretty unusual, too, you know, to open with a league contest under the lights here on Thursday night of Labor Day weekend. I mean, it's it's real exciting. I mean, it's going to be should be a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be different to open with Maine instead of finish with Maine, but it's, it's pretty much a one-shot deal, I believe, too. I mean, there was some scheduling things that got changed, and so that becomes the opening game, but it's I don't think believe that'll be the case down the road, but... You certainly look to take advantage of the, the opportunity when it's here. All right, Lupoli to throw after the first down. The last pass to Malik Love, this one to Neil O'Connor. If you'd like season ticket information, of course, you can visit unhwildcats.com. 862-4000 is the ticket office, and they'll be able to fill you in. We have five home games coming up this season. It'll be a first-time Visit for Bryant and their new co their new coach James Perry of the Perry family. Second down, run play down to the fifteen yard line is Love because it's James. James is the brother. I'm sorry, Evan brother Gray. Of, James, the brother of John, who played here, was outstanding wide receiver here, was an outstanding coach here, now coaching with the Houston Texans. 
and various other Perrys all over the all over New England will certainly make their mark on football, including one who's going to vie to be a quarterback at Boston College, E.J. Perry, the latest. From the 15-yard line, Lupoli trying to lead. Oh, he'll take off. Touched up. It will be a first down at the 11-yard line for Team Cats already leading the game 3 to nothing on a Morgan Elman field goal. This is the University of New Hampshire blue-white game. Bob Lipman along with Alan Lessels. Bryant will be in. And we have Rhode Island, Towson, and Elon. Right? Our three other league games in addition to Maine this year. Inside handoff. Gray down to the seven-yard line. Road schedule is pretty tough. I'll include a visit to FBS member Georgia Southern in the second week of the season. And uh, uh, Virginia trips coming up back-to-back -back weeks that uh, will see us visit defending national champion James Madison and then William and Mary. Yeah, that should be an interesting uh, stretch. Looking in the corner over there for Nick Lorden, and it's incomplete. And the defensive coverage for Sean Cavallaro out of Hanover, New Hampshire. He and his uh, brother, both members of the Wildcat team. So third down, let's see what Lupoli decides to do here. Battle would seem to be on for the backup quarterback role or the, behind Trevor Knight. And Lupoli, and again, the other two quarterbacks you'll see today, Will Pollard and uh, Ivan Niamagabu, both looking. Back of the end zone, that's Lorden. And that's a touchdown. What a catch. In double coverage, the back of the end zone, and Lupoli's pass is caught for a score. That was a nice throw, and like you say, it kind of thread the needle there in between two defenders. Loop and and Lorden did a nice job going up, getting the ball and holding on to it too, getting a little hit at the end as he's in the back side of the end zone. Been hearing quite a bit about Lorden during the spring. You know, as far as he's had a, a good camp, impressed the coaches with his receiving. A nice catch there. Petting off extra point try gives Team Cats a ten nothing lead. A year ago, four teams from the CAA made it to the postseason. UNH, 13th consecutive trip to the playoffs, ended with a second-round loss at eventual national champion James Madison. Richmond made it uh, to the postseason. Villanova to the postseason. They'll both have new coaches coming up this year. Two squads, again, that we will not see in the regular season this year. Russ Huseman comes over from Chattanooga to become the new coach at Richmond. Mark Ferranti is promoted for Andy Talley, who's retired at Villanova. JMU went on to win the national championship over Youngstown State. Those four squads all made it uh, CAA teams to the postseason a year ago. Fine years for Maine with their first-year coach. Don't be uh, pretty formidable. Right? That's a pretty good opener. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a real good opener because they're going to, you know, like you said, they showed have a lot of improvement last year, and they'll be certainly looking to get out of the gate in a similar fashion. They'll be as wound for that game as certainly the UNH side. Frederick on the handoff. Let's talk a little about the defensive line. And you'll see out there, I mean, these are some of the, uh, the guys that you're certainly going to recognize. That 72 at left tackle uh, will be a senior now. Rick Holt out of Portsmouth. Ryan Sasnock, uh, Sasnock 71. As Pollard, the uh, quarterback, throws it away. Be second yeah. down and nine. And those two guys in the middle, I mean, they, they went into last season, you know, with some question marks, frankly. I mean, they were, you know, they'd been in the program a couple of years, and they were given the first shot at defensive tackle, and and uh, they they really passed the test. I mean, they had a nice season. They both started every game, and uh, they, they're just solid run stoppers. They're, they're big guys, obviously. They're up close to 300 pounds. And, and the defensive coaches, on, you know, the, the guys on that side particularly, are, are real excited, excited now to have them back with another year of experience. Sosnack's a junior. Rick Holt, who's, you know, from nearby Portsmouth, you know, is a senior and, and they provide, now they've got experience and they've got some size and you can kind of build the line around them. 
Good job on the scramble there by Pollard to get the ball down to sophomore Brandon Gallagher, and he'll take it for the first down. Ball moves into Team Cats territory with about 2.05 to go in the first quarter. Cats 10, and the Wild nothing in this spring game. Quarterback here is uh, Will Pollard from Intervale, New Hampshire. Scrambles on. This is 94. Mike Barisney coming from the backside. He's one of the defensive ends here along with Jawan Horton. Horton has a lot of experience there out of uh, Virginia, and uh, they'll be the ends that Coach Kyle McAllister will work with this year. Well, the same, same idea there as the interior guys on the outside. You know, you lose Cam Shorey, who's a, a senior last year, another kid out of Maine, you know, a very productive player, um, you know, and, and a great student. He won the share of the, the Boone Award for leadership in, in the CAA last year. You lose him, and that's, a, and that's a big loss. But you have some guys back who've played quite a bit, starting with Jay Juan Horton, who's a junior now, and then Kyle Reiser. Yeah, he's out, the, he's out there now. You'll see the 97 of Reiser from uh, Plymouth, New Hampshire. Yeah, another another kid out of Plymouth. You know, he and, he and Jared Keel are both both huge members of this this defensive team, defensive stuff. So they've got some Josh Caney as well. So we've got some defensive ends that have experience as well. So that front seven, front seven's had a pretty good spring and they they had a pretty good year last year. Third down, seven to go. Pollard looking over the middle, and he didn't have much time at all. Try to flip it out into the flat where Deontay Chapman had uh, moved. And so it'll be fourth down, 10 to nothing, Team Cats. We have a field goal drive for one score, and that was engineered by Trevor Knight, and a touchdown drive that was engineered by Christian Lupoli, went down the field and found Nick Lorden for what has been so far the game's only touchdown. So it'll be Drew Sanborn who will punt it. Line of scrimmage is the 46. Good snap. And the goal is to try to angle it out of bounds. And want to try to get it inside the 20. And let's see, did he accomplish that? He will be, well, the 19. That's inside. Yep, it's inside the 20. Not by no a whole lot. Drew Sambone's part of that kicking game and... and where UNH returns Morgan Elman as the kicker and Max Pednoff as the as the punter, but they're both getting pushed. Now Elman's getting pushed largely by Pednoff, who's who's had a good spring kicking the ball and you know looking for duties as as kicker and field goal. And Pednoff himself is getting pushed by Drew Sanborn, who we just saw, who's had a good season punting. Good year punting. All right, this will be the second series for Trevor Knight. At quarterback, led his team to a field goal. He's got a long field here. Fires over the middle, and that's caught. Neil O'Connor in traffic up to the 32-yard line. Comes up with a reception and is already his fourth catch. Ties him for the most here in the scrimmage with Malik Love, who's also out there. How about the tight end, Justin Malone Woods? Played as a redshirt freshman from San Diego last year. Be a run play and around to the right side. Comes Goodrich for a couple yards. Yeah, Justin Malone Woods is another one of those young kids that the coaches are pretty high on. They've got some expectations of him. Last year, with given, given people and personnel, he got moved a little bit. He played some wide receiver. Now they've moved him back inside. You know, and he's, he's been improving as a, as a blocker. He's got some ability to get down the field. He's got some great size. He's in the slot on the left side. Furthest out is Kieran Presley. And they'll send Malik Love in motion. Knight has the football. Second down and short. Comes back to Goodrich. Beats his man. Has the first down. Gets it up near midfield. And pretty good read of the play there by Donald Goodrich. Yeah, nice first move to, to break free. Little, little shuffle there to split one man. Goodrich is going to be a leader on special teams. There isn't any question about that. As the first quarter comes to an end here in the blue right scrimmage, we have a Morgan Elman field goal for Team Cats and a Christian Lupoli to Nick Lorton touchdown pass of seven yards. 
and the Cats lead the Wild by a score of 10 to nothing at the end of one. And I show Lupoli 5 of 7 for 60 yards, and Trevor Knight is 5 of 6 for 44 yards for Team Cats. I can live with those numbers. 2 for 6 for Will Pollard. Ivan Nia Mogabo 0 for 1. The fans who, uh, who came out today, and this is a free event and an opportunity to, uh, to take in Wildcat Stadium, uh, were given tours. There's a nice crowd here, too, for this. And nice day for it, we said. If you, people are sitting home listening, we've still got another hour probably to play. And you, you mentioned tickets being available and at unhwildcats.com and, and elsewhere. They're also available here today, and there's, there's some balloons floating down below us attached to seats, and people, some people are coming and getting a tour of the stadium and also getting a take, taking a look at um, you know, what seats are available, and they can pick out their own seats if you've got time to get over here and buy yourself tickets for that home opener against Maine and the rest of the season. Do we just get the uh, introduction, uh, introduction of the UNH recruits? The that's football, nice. the that's, incoming that's class? Different. I like that. That's Introduce them by name and where they were from. A couple of big boys in that group. And again, we, we look back at, on last year where, you know, where UNH has gotten to the point where, you know, every year there might be one or two, maybe three, you know, true freshmen who play. And as it turned out, two of those freshmen played huge roles on the defense. So, hey, those guys we'll see right now walking off the field. There are some big guys among them. And uh, who knows, maybe one or two of those guys will be playing, you know, come fall here in Wildcat Stadium. All right, here we go with uh, the start of the second quarter. We'll go again with Team Cats. It's an end around. And is that Kieran Presley? It is from Amherst, Massachusetts on the around. They haven't uh, targeted him, I don't think, in the, in the passing game so far today. But he, that, uh, that around by the wide receiver has been in the UNH playbook for a while. And that one gets eight yards. Presley's got some speed, right? He does have some speed, and he's an interesting story, too. He's, he's been a guy that you, you kind of heard about for a while and kind of expecting him to break out, uh, but he's been slowed by injuries. He hasn't had a lot of chance last year. He, he was kind of going to be an op you thought was going to be an opportunity for Kieran Presley. And injuries kept him sidelined much of the season and slowed down all the season probably or close to it. And uh, he's another guy that's one of those weapons at, at wide receiver that you know, is going to benefit from having some chances. Nick Lorden goes wide to the right on third down and short. If you're thinking a run here, Evan Gray is the running back to the right of Trevor Knight. Checks off, looks back over to the sidelines. And it'll be a run play. And Gray is going to spin in that second effort. It's not going not gonna to do it. Good job by the uh, defensive front there, and I'll throw out the name Stephen Harper, a linebacker who was in in the middle of that play, and he's that's a new name for New Hampshire. That's a new name, but it's a, a name they've been talking about around here uh, quite a bit this spring, a little bit even last last fall. He's he was a true freshman last fall, and, and really was a standout on on scout teams and in in that group. And he's someone that they really have high expectations for as a you know, be it a redshirt freshman this fall. Fourth and one, and it's a good play call there as instead of banging into the middle, they angle Evan Gray out, and he'll pick up the first down. 22 with the run, and Team Cats already leading 10 to nothing, moving it here with 10 minutes to go in the first half of the annual spring game in Durham, New Hampshire at our beautiful Wildcat Stadium. If you haven't seen it yet, come on out. Pick up some other names on the uh, defensive side. I notice uh, here on the right side of the defensive line is Brian Carter. He is a red shirt freshman from Port St. Lucie, Florida. They come back with a screen and look who is there. Fedrick, he is open and gets a pretty good yardage gain downfield before run out of bounds by Dean Adams, sophomore from Medfield, Massachusetts. Adams out there in the secondary with Nick Marino. 26 is Gino Miller, 15 Michael Balsamo, and 41 is the Canadian Alonzo Adai on the left side. 
First down from just outside the 20 for Trevor Knight. Six out of eight for Knight in the game. That pass to Fedrick goes for 12 and a first down. And some movement. Was it in the line? It was. I think it was Cyrus Offensive Boone. Offensive line. Cyrus Boone's another one of those guys on the in the middle in the defense. You know, last year there were there were high expectations for Cyrus a year ago, and he ended up with a pretty serious foot injury that kept him sidelined sidelined for the whole season. So he's back. He's in the mix for he's in a mix for a good amount of playing time in the middle there. Moving back to the offensive side of the line. And that uh, offensive line group that the Wildcats will send out this year, Coach Alex Miller has done a terrific job, and he may have one of the tougher tasks on this team. Pass goes in and out of the hands of Gallagher. And the reason why is the experience that the Wildcats are going to lose here on that line with Tad McNeely and Curtis Neeler and Andrew Lauderdale all graduating. Yeah, and include Alex, Alexander Morrill as well, who was supposed to be on that offensive line and missed the season with an injury. So basically you had you had four starters, three starters, you know, that actually played last year. And that you know, Coach Miller is yeah, he's earning his earning his keep and stuff this spring and but he's got some guys to work with. He's got a bunch some good guys to work with and we've we've touched on a few of them. You've got the tackles, you got Dane Heron and Will McInerney, both of whom started last year. Jake Kennedy in the middle and then couple of guards on the inside right now you know guys are getting a lot of looks are Nick Velty on one side and and uh, Jack Carroll on the other and Jack Carroll was a guy that you know was slated to play defense last year defensive tackle he got moved in the offseason he's done a nice job in filling in one of the guard spots pass there to Karen Presley and I did notice Cyrus Boone made a good long run from behind to bring down Presley and keep that only to a couple yard gain Knight will work out of the shotgun, empty backfield here. Knight takes off and gets touched up here. Knight, red jerseys, you're not tackling the quarterbacks at this point of the season. We'll try to keep them as healthy as can be. Down to the 17-yard line. Fourth down, Coach Mack going to try a field goal here? That's what it looks like. Mitch McPike. No, maybe not. Oh, yeah, they yeah, will. Yeah, 27 is a kicker now. He's yeah. not gonna, they're not going to hand him the ball this time. <laughs> and uh, 27 was pretty good running back here in Dalton Crossing. Mitch McPike from Birmingham, England. This will be a 34-yard field goal. Trevor Knight will put it down. Don't have Ryan Farrell to do the long snapping anymore either. Let's see, did McPike get it? That ball is going to sail through. That's a field goal for Mitch McPike. We'd mentioned, uh, we were talking before the game today, that there are five kickers on the Wildcat roster. So you want to perform, right? McPike's field goal is good from 34 yards out. And the Cats, Team Cats, out to a 13 nothing lead today over Team Wild. Yeah, there is some competition, like we said. I mean, that's, that's McPike who nails that one, and... You know, you got guys right now anyway, the Elman's ahead of him and, and Pednoff's ahead of him. So, you know, there's some good good competition going on there. All right, so first down, they're going to put the ball down at the 45-yard line this time. And they'll run uh, back out Christian Lupoli at the quarterback spot. Now, Lupoli led a team Cats to a drive, and now he'll be the quarterback here for Team Wild. Chapman, the running back. Lupoli. And I guess this is one thing, one part of his game that we'll, we'll need to see and watch develop is his scrambling ability because Wildcat quarterbacks need to meet, need to be mobile. Yeah, and like you, you touched on before, maybe make, makes it a little challenging or interesting at least to, to watch the quarterbacks when you know they're, with, they're wearing the red jerseys. UNH has gone to wearing red jerseys on the quarterbacks all the time during the spring uh, so they can't be touched. You can't tackle tackle them, which which makes them you know stay in. They're more apt to stay in the pocket probably and stay out of trouble. Try to stay out of trouble. Yeah, just as you say that, it's a handoff and it goes to Chapman and the quarterback decides to get in the mix for the block and he got taken down down uh, down low. Nothing uh, serious there and Lupoli is okay. But, you know, it kind of robs, it, it protects, obviously, the quarterbacks, and it's good for their health 
you know, and it, it encourages them to stay in the pocket a little longer, I think. But it, uh, it kind of takes away one of their weapons or one of the, well, certainly one of their big weapons for a lot of them. How about that catch by Michael Hirschman? Down on the ground on his back, there was a penalty flag on the play. The coverage for 46, he, he, did, he took that away from Prince Smith Jr. Going against the best right right there. That that worked out nicely. I mean, Loopley put the ball, as, you know, as, as they say, where only he could catch it, and he went down and came up with the ball. You certainly have to be encouraged from what you've seen from Christian Loopley. I get, again, I guess we all realize this is just a scrimmage. Yeah, he, Coach Mack has been saying through, throughout the spring that Lupoli has kind of closed the gap. Ivan, Ivan certainly was the number two coming into camp based on experience largely and, and does some nice things. But Lupoli had a pretty good camp, and he, he again, he had closed the gap. So it's good that, that backup quarterback job is a very interesting, uh, interesting race and certainly one that's probably going to last for a while. Deontay Chapman with a position switch from linebacker to running back, and you had uh, – drawn up the numbers as uh, the Wildcat Insider previews. Loomis Chafee, a prep year there, he ran for 1,132 yards and 16 touchdowns. And that uh, one of the reasons why he was so successful as a running back, that they're giving him some reps here at the position, and he'll try to earn his stripes in the yeah, fall. Yeah, he, again, he's a guy that – he was he was impressive. He and Stephen Harper were the guys early in camp that they were talking about as you know the the young linebackers who you know keep an eye on them. And then when Trayvon Bryant went down, he uh, fairly quickly got moved got moved to running back. And they're going to give him a shot there and see how it goes. You know I don't I don't know if it's a permanent move. It's it's permanent for now. I think is the way that one of the coaches uh, one of the coaches put it, which is which is kind of fitting I think, isn't it? Permanent for now. Yes. <laughs> Be a false start here. They've got Hirschman, 17 on the right side again against Prince Smith Jr. Let's see if uh, Lupoli looks in that direction. And he is going that way. And it's going to be another catch, short of the first down. Ball the uh, 26-yard line. Be a long field goal to see whether or not they want to try to get uh, Team Wild on the field. A great opportunity for uh, the fans to come out and, and see the ball club and, and see the stadium. and it's, it's not like in the SEC where I was watching some of these uh, scrimmage games were played before near full stadiums. But it's just a reminder that football's a year-round sport. And, the, you know, a little bit of a shutdown. The guys come back for their allotted, was it 10 practices? Not 15. 15 practices. And then uh, we'll be back at it again in the fall. And they'll put the work in in the gym, and yeah, they'll have they'll have voluntary workouts this summer. They'll be they'll usually they start out in the early summer. There'll be 25, 30 guys up here, or twenty, and then it, it gradually grows as the summer progresses. To the fact they'll be you know they'd probably be fifty or sixty guys up here, and then they report actually with the first game on August thirty first. They'll be reporting back here on July. I think it's late late July, so they'll be back here before too long. Fedrick on the carry. Go for no gain. If you wonder about uh, the ground game, the leader so far has been Evan Gray. Shows six carries for 26 yards. Most of the good significant yardage for the Wildcats in the scrimmage today have come on the pass play. Including a 39-yarder to Neil O'Connor. From this quarterback, Christian Lupoli, who looks to throw. There's a pretty good pop over the middle. And taking a hit hard, 86 is Joey Carroll, a wide receiver from Waltham, Mass. Yeah, that hit, that hit, Bob. You notice that name, and you remember that name, number 33. That's Evan Horn. He's he's a guy that, you know, he's he's a guy that the, the coaches point out, you know, maybe – Certainly could have played last year, and as as these true freshmen got into the lineup, you know Prince Smith and and Pop Lacey, you know Evan Horn, it, one of the, as one of the coaches said, you know was was kind of looking and saying, hey, I, I could be doing that. Why am I playing? You know, and it's tough for those freshmen to come out. They play, they play tons as a senior. You know, they're the focal point, and they come here and come to most colleges, and they red shirt, and that's a tough season for them. And Evan Horn was one who watched and watched and learned, and they, he's 
might be the talk of the team as far as uh, defensive guys go. They have, they have very high expectations for him, and he put a good, pretty good lick on right there. When you're a red shirt, I, what it means is that you haven't played in a game. It doesn't mean that you haven't been around the football program. Getting exactly, in. and you do a lot of work. And a lot of times, a lot of times it's it's you know they, they I mean they, they work as a scout team a lot of times. You know in the preseason the more they, they work with the regulars and learn the UNH offense, UNH defense. But then when they get into the season, a lot of those guys are on a scout team, so they have to learn the opposing team defense or run the opposing team defense or the opposing team offense. Um, so they you know they, they're guys that really shine, and you can tell could be the next guys, but for whatever reason maybe they didn't. Need at need at that position, they didn't play. Lupoli on a strike. When we're right back to the same receiver, Joey Carroll, after he was hit, and after the uh, timeout, Lupoli will move the chains at a first down. The center it looks like on this uh, this group for the Cats is 57, Colin McGuire. He's from Fayetteville, Georgia. Shotgun snap, Chapman off of the right side for a couple of yards. I think it's kind of interesting to note here, Bob, that this is a it's a unit that Lupley's leading that is certainly not the first string, right? And they're going against a lot of the first string defense. You know, this this is kind of impressive right now. Yeah, and again, a, another opportunity to take a look here at the at the quarterback battle that it is uh, developing. I was just now looking over the, looking over the crowd, and it's you know it's it's certainly not a Penn State or Alabama's spring game, but there's yep. there are more people, a lot more people here than there are most spring games. And if you look down below, I mean there's there's a good crowd enjoying the seats, those nice seats, at the Victory Club seats, as well as reserve seats down below that. And uh, there's, you know, there's some fans on the on the old home sides across the way. You know, maybe maybe that's about what normally would have been a crowd, Bob, and I, I would think right. A, over there, maybe the crowd would be a little bigger than what's on the other side, but you know now you've got several hundred, several hundred if not more people on this side. And we should mention for those who are watching us live here, there's a pretty big uh, University of New Hampshire athletic story coming up here uh, within the next couple of hours, right? I, th I think relays. so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, the um, uh, pen relays are going on right now. Pen relays are going on in Philadelphia, and UNH has had various athletes down there. Uh, we'll get more detail if you want as we move along. Lupoli in traffic, just throws the ball away. And, Didn't um, take the sack. There have been some people competing in relays, or a group of women that competed on Thursday. But uh, the, the highlight, one of the highlight events of the of the Penn relays and certainly a highlight of UNH is, is getting to be any time Eleanor Purrier, the outstanding junior from Montgomery, Vermont, runs. You know, it's a it's must watch, must watch streaming. Uh, she's running in the mile at about three o'clock this afternoon at the Penn relays, and it should be interesting to see how she makes out there. Keep it on the ground on third down. Fedrick trying to push his way forward at one time. Was a member of the main football program. Now he's back here in New Hampshire. Gets to the 12 and will try the field goal here as uh, the kicker out is Hayden Middleton. Went to nearby St. Thomas High School. And then the other story we'll be following throughout the day today the NFL draft moves into its final four rounds and we'll see if we get some UNH names on the board there. Line drive kick is through, so today we have seen three field goal tries here in the spring game by three different kickers. They've all been made. Team Wild is on the board on the Hayden Middleton field goal, and it is 13-3 in favor of Team Cats. They will call that a 29-yard field goal from Hayden Middleton. Are we gonna call that halftime? We are. So we're gonna take a break. 
And we, again, will be back with more coverage of the 2017 spring football game at Wildcat Stadium in Durham, New Hampshire. The Wildcats putting the final touches on their spring practice as they work towards what will be an August 31st opening Thursday night throwdown against the University of Maine here at Wildcat Stadium. We'll continue with more for you in just a little bit.
All right, we're about ready to go here with the second half. Give me 10 seconds. All right, the spring game. Here's the first play of the second half with Ivan Niamagabo at quarterback, and they were going long to Malik Love on the very first play. Tried the bomb, it didn't work. Niamagabo only had that one series in the first half. That was, uh, unfortunately for him, a tip ball that was intercepted by DeAndre Drummond Myrie. Bob Lipman and Alan Lessels split this into a team Cats and a team Wild. It's 13-3 in favor of the Cats. Ball from the 45-yard line here. A little pressure coming. They went for the quarterback, but it's a run play to Evan Gray. Turning those legs. Good second effort. Gets inside the 40. Yeah, there was, like you say, there was pressure coming from the, the left edge there. and Got rid of the ball inside quickly, and Evan Gray made, it, made a good use of the time. Right to the line of scrimmage here. Three receivers to the right. Again, it'll be Gray going left. And that'll be a pickup of about three, four yards. So much uh, of what you can accomplish as a running back is going to be those yards after contact. So watch uh, Dalton Cross, and I was terrific in terms of being able to make guys not miss. And, and uh, he'd get uh, he get you 10, 20 extra yards a lot of times. Niamagabu out of the pocket, comes back over the middle. That's a good pass to Presley, and he's got a first down around the 25. Yeah, and these UNH running backs, Bob, one of the reasons one of the reasons for the excitement around him is these are some some well built, rugged kids. I mean, they they go 200, a little over two, 220, 225 pounds, and they run hard. You know, Donald Goodrich always has. Uh, he's he's probably the smaller of the three, and then you've got uh, Evan Gray, who's a, who ran right there as we showed bouncing through people. He's listed at 222, and uh, Deontay Chapman's a big boy too. This is Team Cats with the football, Goodrich with the fake, and then Niamagabu trying to get it downfield to Neil O'Connor. That'll be incomplete. And again, we touched at the top of the broadcast very briefly on our captains this year who were announced earlier this week, and you noted that Trayvon Bryant will serve as a captain on this year's squad, even though he is uh, not going to be able to play this year. And the other three? Yeah, and we, we touched on some of them, I think, a little bit, but Andre drummond Mayri, who had the interception early, he's a, he's a senior in the, in the backfield, defensive backfield, very steadying influence back there. He's one of the captains. And then two other guys on offense, uh, Donald Goodrich, the running back we just talked about, he's going to be a captain. And uh, it's, as is Jake Kennedy, you know, the center. So a good, good group of guys, good to, kind of a mixture of guys who, who talk a lot and don't talk, don't talk as much, and enthusiastic guys. And the other, I talked to all three of them, all four of them, the other day after practice, soon after they were named, and they were, they're going to be good representatives of the of the team. Yeah, Magabu had a shot at the end zone, but couldn't make the connection there. The previous play, though. I'll note he hit tight end Jack Cavallaro out of Hanover for a first down and a pickup of 11 yards. The tight end group would be led by the experienced Justin Malone Woods. Jordan Powell is the senior who graduated and uh, certainly was the primary target there the second half of last season. Yeah, and again, th that's another spot where you know, it's a little bit by committee and a, a spot where there's some, some playing time to be had. And you've got guys like Brendan Hill, who's a sophomore, um, some good size. Again, he's 6'4", 240, about 240. 
Um, and there is Justin Malone Woods, of course. John DeCaro's had a pretty good spring. Kid out of Texas, who's a junior now. Now, and he's one of those tight end prospects. Matt Matt Torrey's been been injured some. He's not, he's not playing today. Nick DeRoche has been injured some, not playing today. But there's there's a group of guys there, and it's obviously have been a position that UNH likes to use a lot. You know, and likes to likes to throw the ball to the tight end, um, and certainly uses uses the position in the running game. Another carry for Evan Gray. He had two on the first down run, and this, or rather on the second down run, this one will get him down near the first down marker. Gray has been the most productive running back by far so far in the scrimmage, and for Team Cats, he's now carried 10 times, and he's up around 68 yards. 9.41 to go third quarter. Team Cats with the ball, leading 13-3. Ivan Niamagabo, out of Merrimack Valley High School in New Hampshire. One of two New Hampshire quarterbacks on the roster. We've seen the other as well. Will Pollard out of Kennett. Malik Love goes in motion. Quarterback rolling that way. Looking for Love. That's a touchdown. Love had one touchdown last year, although he was among the leading receivers for... The Wildcats, in fact, he was the leading receiver with 59. Very productive slot receiver. Is into the end zone, and Team Cats are now out to a 19-3 lead on the touchdown pass from Neil Magabo to Love. And they play Evan Gray there. Bob showed his worth in another way. He picked up a, a blitzing blitzing linebacker and stuff and, and bought a little bit more time for Ivan to get that ball away for that touchdown pass. Extra point on the way. This is Jason Hughes on the kick is good. It is 20 to 3 in favor of Team Cats. And Ivan did a nice job leading the team down the field there, mixing it up, mixing up some runs, some nice passes. It's another nice pass to, to uh, Malik Love there. You brought up John DeCaro's name a little while ago, and I'll, when we've mentioned John DeCaro, he is uh, one of those who. Uh, was called on to be part of the Be a Match program that's uh, coming up. The 8th Annual Bone Marrow Testing Drive is coming up in a couple of weeks, 1030 here on the UNH campus. And this is where they swab your, your cheek. And the, uh, the Be the Match is part of the National Marrow Donor Program. And John... Uh, actually saved a life. He, he was found to be a match. Coach Mack has uh, had his football players for a number of years be a part of that. It's a pretty, uh, pretty good story. Yeah, it's pretty impressive what that, what that program does. It's you know, all around college football. Um, May 2nd? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, so I, that's, that's, in, that's next week. That's Tuesday, I believe, yep. isn't it? Um, but, yeah, the, the Make Be a Match program has, has been – Huge successful, and, and again, it's picked up a lot of a lot of ground, especially in football and, and football teams. You know, supporting that as a cause, and it's pretty neat to go down there and, and you know to watch the kids come in, the kids from throughout the campus come in and register, and you know they're given their time to just go register, and then you know if there's a match, I mean it can be a huge, it be life saving and stuff. So yep. it's, it's pretty and, and nice. Jimmy G and Santi, who also was a wide receiver here, also found uh, a match and. That worked out well. It's a good story. Quarterback here is Christian Lupoli for Team Wild with a score 20 to 3. Lupoli rifles over the middle, and there was contact there on the intended receiver. Incomplete to Brandon Gallagher, but uh, Drummond Myrie was there a little early. No flag. There are officials here, and most of the, uh, the violations we've had have been. Uh, just little things, uh, mostly in the uh, line violations. So we're going to get a punt here. Can we go back to the Todd Walker Award? Because we mentioned it right at the top of the uh, telecast today, which has been uh, presented in the honor of the one-time UNH wide receiver who unfortunately, unfortunately lost his life when he became involved in what was an attempted robbery attempt. And each year in the, uh, the spirit of Todd Walker, uh, you'll hear the phrase here, what would Todd do? Uh, they do recognize one football player each season, and it's such a prestigious award. I know a number of the uh, the players who have earned the award come back to to help celebrate the honoree this year, and the honoree this season is uh, Bishop Girton's Nick Marino. 
Yeah, that's really a, a, a great award. I mean, it's a it's a teammate award. It's really celebrating what Todd Walker was all about. I mean, he was, as Coach Mack says in, in his presentations and said again this morning, you know, he, he wasn't the greatest player on the team. He didn't catch the most balls, but he was a guy that, you know, everybody looked up to. You know, he embraced everyone, you know, and made friends with everyone, not just not just on the football team, but around the school and with professors. Was only on the campus about a year and a half, but just made a huge impact and, and died in a tragic way and stepped in front of a, a, a robber or a burglar uh, and to protect a woman that he was walking home, walking home um, back, back on um, 2011. And, you know, since then, it's, this Walker Award has become one of the awards that's really uh, means a lot to the whole team. And, and as you said, Jimmy Valis and Andy Valis were here this morning and they talked about, you know, they won the award. They were very good friends with with um, with Todd Walker. And the other winners, I was just looking at the list here. There's Jason Roach, Tim Farina. He was here today. He's another, another one of the Plymouth kids. Uh, Jimmy Valis, then Jimmy Early, a Bishop Brady High School, um, former Bishop Brady High School player. Uh, Nico Steridi, who was here, and actually was telling me Nico's moving to Colorado, and he's going to go live in live in Vail. Where right Todd now. is from, yep. Yeah, and uh, Andy Valis, and then last year Kevin McNally, and now Nick Marino, who's an outstanding student and just an, an all-around uh, huge addition to this team at, at safety. Maybe the highlight of this drive was earlier on here, a couple of plays ago when Trevor Knight tried to throw a bomb to a double-teamed Deep receiver Kieran Presley knocked away. Now here's third down. Knight will scramble, fires over the middle. Look at that catch by Nick Lord. He had a touchdown reception earlier in the game, and that was a beauty of a catch at a first down. That was a great catch, and a defender had his hands hands in there, and, and Knight got it, gave him enough room, and he pulled it in and with a guy right on him. Nice play by Nick Lord. From Bishop Gurdon High School, same high school that gave us Nick Marino. Knight. Looked like he had a little trouble finding the grip on the ball on that one is incomplete to Joey Carroll. Wildcats open the football season with a Thursday night throwdown, a CAA game against arch rival Maine here at Wildcat Stadium. Be a 7 o'clock game. Home schedule will also include Bryant's a night game. We, we set the game times right. We've got the uh, – yeah. Okay. We've both got the schedule sitting right in front of us. We've got them. We've Ryan got them. is a 6 o'clock game. Here is Knight rolling to his left on the sideline. Lorden again, but he was out of bounds. Yeah, Rhode Island game is at 3.30. Bryant's at 6 p.m. Rhode, Rhodey's the homecoming game Correct. on September 23rd. We get back-to-back -back Rhode Island teams at home, back-to-back -back Virginia teams on the road. The road schedule is pretty tough. That it is. Yeah, James Madison, like you said, is national champion, and certainly uh, from all indications, they're primed. They're, they're going to be looking to repeat as national champions. They have a lot back. Knight, they're going to call that a tackle on the pursuit, Brian Carter, the defensive end. We mentioned his name earlier, Floridian. Yeah, Brian Carter's another one in that defensive end mix. We talked about Josh Kenya and Kyle Reiser, J. Juan Horton, and, and those fellows. Brian Carter's one of the young players who's really been impressive. He missed a little time in the spring uh, with an injury or an illness, um, but he's a guy that's really opened some eyes on one of those ends. So be a punt. Max Pettit off will punt. Pop Lacey deep. Lacey part of that defensive secondary that had the terrific season a year ago. Led by Prince Smith Jr. with his five interceptions. Good snap. Pettit off. Deep and the over the shoulder fair catch made by Lacey at the seven yard line with 5.49 to go in quarter number three. Yeah, we touched on it, Bobby, with Dalton Crossing gone and Casey DeAndre gone, and 
and actually both hoping to hear some good news this afternoon when the NFL draft, if, you know, if not during the draft, and, you know, hopefully right after the draft is, you know, getting a shot to play professionally at, in the NFL, you know, when they, there'll be a lot of free agent discussion, you know, as soon as the draft ends, probably before the draft ends. But with those two guys gone, there's some playing time to be had at returner. It's, a, it's been a pretty good weapon for the Wildcats the last few years with those with those two guys. And Pop Lacey's in the mix at, in the, on the punt game. Guys like Kieran Presley, Malik Love. See, Danelle Pumphrey was taken with a 26 pick in the fourth round. He was the... He's, he's no big deal. We held him. We held him under 100 yards, right? We did, and no one else did. <laughs> San Diego All State. He was an San Diego outstanding State. player. Yeah. Where do you went? I interrupted him. Uh 26th pick in the fourth round to Philadelphia. Nice. They're up to, they're about five picks after that. Pick 31 of round four. All right, here's a good run off the right side. And it's uh, the guy who's done uh, a bulk of the running today, or is that Chapman? I that was 42. That was Chapman. Yep. Again, if you are just uh, tuning in coverage of the spring game, Deontay Chapman was a defensive player who, with the injury to Trayvon Bryant, has moved over to the running back position. Another look at Ivan Niamagabu. And that was a first down run. And Chapman was a defensive player. We should point out, we probably pointed out before, but two weeks ago he was a defensive player too. And the switch came just a little while ago, and UNH kind of looked at their options as far as running back goes and needed another player back there. And as Coach Mack put it, you know, why wait till next year? They figured they'd get him five or six practices, get him the scrimmage, kind of see what he has. And Chapman is a redshirt freshman who did not – did right, he didn't play last year. Yeah, he spent last year on the defensive side of the ball. And yep. Did travel. Impressive. Did travel on a couple of the trips. Up to the 30-yard line. So Chapman been doing a uh, bulk of the ball carrying and then Hirschman on the uh, reception there. And here pass out to the right side. This one loses a couple of yards as Nia Magabu got it out there to uh, 37 is Kyle Phipps. He's a redshirt freshman from Linden, New Jersey. First time I've called his name today. Anthony Rizzo is a wide receiver far out to the left. Fedrick on the handoff, and that'll go for about three or four yards, set up a long third down. Team Wild with the ball, trailing Team Cats. If I add up uh, Ivan Niamagabo's numbers, now he's five for nine for 22 yards. Christian Lupoli has played for the two teams, combined 9 for 13 for 96. Trevor Knight, 8 for 14 for 86. Ian Magabo, flag down. Quarterback rolling right and will scramble out of bounds. You mentioned Ivan's. Ivan you know, took advantage of his next chance to start off the second half and had that nice touchdown drive and then ended with a touchdown pass to Malik Love. So... After not getting a lot of time in the first half, he's he's done some good things in the second. Now now he his group is a facing a fourth down. They called any legal procedure, so the play wouldn't have counted for a big gain anyway. And give the ball back here to Team Cats. Maine is the home opener, August thirty first at seven o'clock. Georgia Southern is the big gamers. A one hopper back to Hayden Middleton. Fair catch on the other end. Middleton did a good job to get the ball away. And I'd mentioned Brian Farrell, veteran linebacker and a terrific leader of this team last year, has been the long snapper. And Coach Beck said, I don't think he made a bad snap in his career. Well, now they've got to develop that next guy. And if I look at my special teams card, I see names like Jared Keel, Evan Horn, Nick Lubisher on uh, for the potential long snapper job. Yeah, exactly. Both long and, and short snapping. You know, like you say, it's 
Coach Mack said that the other day about didn't have a bad snap, and then you kind of – it's one of those positions, obviously, where you don't notice, you know, if, if things go the way they're supposed to, who knows who's snapping. But as soon as you have a couple, you know, a, a snap that's that's over a punter's head or, or skips like that one did, Middleton did a nice job of catching it. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an essential part of the game, certainly. Will Pollard will come on the pass, and this is uh, just mentioned Nick Lubisher, wide receiver from Red Bank Catholic, Red Bank, New Jersey. Pick up about three yards. So make it second down and about seven yards to go. Cody Rothwell, Stephen Harper on the tackle. Quarterback rolling left, coming sideline. Man open, caught, and Brandon Gallagher goes out of bounds, just short of the first down. That was Stephen Harper again, who kind of cut off the play on on Pollard and was getting to him quick. And again, you can't can't hit quarterbacks, but he was he was lined up. I called out the name Cody Rothwell, and I guess I, I, we should make a note of that. Thirty-two. He was a running back who's been converted over to a safety. Try to give it a Gallagher, and uh, the defense stays with that. And Gallagher, I think, still is going to be able to fight and get the first down. He did. Right yeah. at midfield. Yeah, again, Cody and, and those guys, you know, the guys that can play multiple positions and, and can switch like that, the, you know, the, the linemen who can play, a, you know, center or, or guard or, or tackle or guard, those are hugely valuable because it gives you some options. Will McEnany is a guy like that, you know, who played, has played quite a bit of guard, but he's, you know, now, right now he's penciled in to play tackle. Pollard picks the ball up after it hit the ground, and he'll be uh, charged with a, uh, a sack back there. In the secondary, I see some names. Uh, Dean Adams, sophomore from Medfield, Mass, number 13, playing here. Sean Cavallaro out of Hanover. Out on the field, 34 is Nelson Thomas. We mentioned him a little bit earlier in the game. Rothwell and Jordan's is a Diddy, D-I-D-I-E, sophomore from Malden, Mass. Yeah, you've got you've got the young guys. We're getting what late into the third quarter, getting to the fourth quarter. Sun's see some broken names, through some guys the clouds. That, that add some good, nice depth here. Yeah, Pollard looking out. Trying to get the ball out to Chapman, and it's incomplete. The coverage there from the linebacker and a guy who uh, we may see a little bit this year, Cameron Brusco. Yeah, he, you're right. He's, he's another guy in the mix, mix at linebacker. and some, some, We haven't talked a whole lot about them, actually, um, I don't believe. but Mention yeah, the two who are coming right. back in Quinlan Dean and Jared Keel. Yeah, and those two guys, again, they, they were backing up Ryan Farrell. Devon Chalette last year, and a couple of very good seniors, very productive seniors. But Keelan Dean, Keelan Dean had very good years as far as, you know, the amount of snaps they got, they had a lot of production. Pollard just fired one downfield into triple coverage. Joey Carroll cannot make the catch there. That was a long fourth down. You know, so they've, yeah, they're... The linebacker spot is a place that, that, you know, despite losing a couple of starters, I think the Wildcats think they're in, they're in pretty good shape. You know, again, you've got Keel and, Keel and Dean, and behind them, Brusco is one of the guys in the mix. Stephen Hopper's made his way onto the depth chart. Talk about that defense, Bob. One of the things I, I think we, we touched on is, is real interesting about it is, I mean, they, these, a lot of these guys are back and they're starters, and Quinlan, Quinlan Dean's back, not a starter, but... Prince Smith started, Bel Michael Balsamo started at safety, Rick Ellison started at safety, Pop Lacey started, Isaiah Perkins played a lot. Now, on the, on the defense itself, there are six sophomore starters on the, that's penciled in for the spring depth chart. That was pretty interesting. It, it, I don't know if you saw it. I, maybe this is going to bring our scrimmage to an end, but Morgan Elman just booted what was a 42-yard field goal. They had all the players come out from both sides to make a lot of noise. He's going to try another one. Kicking out of the Trevor Knight hold. This is, this is probably Pednoff, isn't it? Or no, I guess it is Morgan Elman. Well, maybe uh, I, I, I'm going to bet you. I'm not going to bet you. I think maybe I didn't hear the whistle, but Coach Mack has been known to try to ice his own guys. <laughs> so I think they might have blown a whistle right before that kick. About a 44-45 yard field goal attempt.
Got it on the way and drilled it right through. Look at that. With a lot to spare. Do I keep adding three points to the scoreboard here? No, I don't think so. I think that's pretty much going to bring our scrimmage to a conclusion. You know, Ten minutes left in the way. fourth quarter. That wouldn't be the first time, right? No, no just, just to finish that thought on the defense. So that right now, in the, in penciled in for the, for the spring, there were six sophomores on defense, four juniors and one senior. But, but these sophomores have a lot of playing time, a lot of experience. It's, it's one of the reasons I think people are excited about the defense. A lot of reasons why a football player, I think, would, would pick the University of New Hampshire these days. I, I mean, it starts at the top. Coach Mack, 18 years, 13 consecutive years in the playoffs, the consistency of the coaches in the program, and now you add in all of the improvements that have taken place and the terrific school, the terrific university that we have here, and it's a, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, and, and you know, again, to be like you said, I mean, to be part of this winning tradition, you look across at the the banner that that holds us number of playoff appearances, and it's up to thirteen in a row right now, which is the best in the country. I mean, the you know, all the you, you figure the Montanas and the Montana states and the in the North Dakota states and North Dakota and Delaware and Richmond and all those teams that play at this level, New New Nature's is by far the longest streak of making the playoffs. So the tradition is here. Go back to the original thing. The pride is here. The excellence is here. You know, just add on to what you say, man. It's, things are going well. Allen did a, a great job at previewing this 2017 football team. I invite you to go back to the website, unhwildcats.com, and you can, you can click on interviews that you conducted with uh, Coach McDonald our, and our assistant coaches to talk about the position groups. And uh, how else can, uh, can our fans follow you? At UNH Insider as, uh, on Twitter. You know, we do stuff on Facebook, and again, on, at the website is the best place. And we're also, you know, we send the stories out so people can get on our lists, our fan list for various, um, for various sports. And some of the stuff even makes it into newspapers and, and various spots. So enjoy your, fun uh, with it. Enjoy your summertime, and uh, we'll see you back here right before Labor Day. Likewise, you too, Bob. Sure. Alan Lessons, Pleasure. great job. I'm Bob Lipman. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage today of the, uh, the blue-white spring football game that's won by Team Cats, 23-3 over the white. And we'll uh, be back with you again real soon. Enjoy your summer.